lovers, and welcome to the Liberty Mike podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. I am Michael, and I am here with Liberty Larry. How's it going? I'm doing okay. How are you over there? Pretty good. Everybody's going to have to excuse Liberty Larry as TB is flared up. <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely a little coffee. Yeah. Um, in fact, it was just uh, <coughs> it's just health problems all around that made us miss last week. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, that wasn't the only problem, I guess, but there were yeah. others. Well. I hope everybody listened to the last interview. That's... Like I really enjoyed doing that. That's my second favorite interview. I we haven't we haven't we haven't recorded since then. No, I, it just hit me when you said that. I was like, oh wow, I guess we hadn't recorded since that. Yeah, yeah. Um, spread that one far and wide if if you can. It's just there's a lot of good information in there. I thought, and it's something that people don't talk about enough. Yeah, because it's an uncomfortable subject, and so but nothing gets done. Yeah. Um. And yeah, next to Scott Horton, that's the most fun I've had doing an interview. Yeah, I hear you. Um. Yeah, and it that was, one was a long time. The Scott Horton interview was a long, long time ago. Yeah, it's been a while. Almost five now. years. Also, yeah. just as a side note <laughs> on that, actually, um, recorded that interview on the fifth anniversary of the podcast. <laughs> I didn't realize it till later, but yeah, yeah, January 21, 2019 is when we posted the first, oh, the first wow. podcast. Yeah. And so, yeah. Um, how so many that years has that been? Five. Five. By my count. By your count. All right. Yeah. Uh, I'll trust your count over mine. Cause... Twenty-four mi- minus nineteen. Yeah, seems seems right. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. Um. Now I don't I don't agree with everything that was said in the interview. Yeah. Of course. Um. Like she's she's a big promoter of government fixing things. Yeah. <laughs> you, you don't really feel that way. No, I just I mean I now and it's not to say like probably. All right. I was thinking about this just the other day, actually. I think it's that um, it's not that all of government is corrupt. It's just wherever the money is, is corrupt. Yeah. So uh, DCFS um, probably is full of people that really want to help people. I believe that. And no money goes to it. Yeah. But I just feel like if money did go to it, it would draw corrupt people. Yeah, I, that may or may not be true. I mean, I'll tell you. Um, what's the what's the other one? D. What's the one we have down here? Um, In Georgia, it was DFAX. Yeah. Um, DHR. DHR oh, is what we have here. Department of Human Resources. Maybe. Human DHS. D- Human Services, right? Something like that. I want to say it's DHR. I don't know. I mean, in my experience with that, which I don't have any direct experience with it, but the people Mm -hmm. that I've known that's had experience with it is that it's not so much that the people in the positions are wanting to do a good job. It's that the way, the way they have to enforce things makes them do stuff. That's just like crazy stupid. Yeah. Well, that is it. Surprise. But but it's I mean, but it's a bureaucracy. But it's, you, right? I was gonna say it's a product of government where yeah. like the a, a person that's in the position can't make a judgment call about something. Mm-hmm. Like it's you know, this is the, this is what you have to do, what and it's clearly the wrong thing to do. Yeah. Um I just feel like uh government is just not capable of helping that much. There's the I think it's um Albert Camus <coughs> who, who said uh Whenever we ask government to do our work for us, they do it worse than we would at greater cost. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I think fair. that applies to, to everything. I mean, okay, so I mailed a letter nah. Monday to New Orleans. Yeah. And um, I went in there thinking, well, it should only take a couple of days. It's 150 miles. Yeah. It's like, this is, this is what should happen. And I, I think pretty much five years ago would have happened, which is I drop off the letter at the Mobile Hub post office, like the main post office in Mobile, Yeah. Um, Monday morning. It goes into the back. It gets sorted in the afternoon. It goes on a truck that evening to New Orleans, to their hub. Um, yeah. It gets sorted when it gets to New Orleans, we'll say Tuesday, Yeah. and then gets sent out that afternoon to the local post office where the letter is going yeah and is then sorted and goes out in the post on wednesday yeah that's that seems to make sense to me yeah so i said you know i want this to be there by wednesday and they said well the only way to make sure that it's there by wednesday is to pay for overnight 
um, then it would be guaranteed tomorrow. And I said, okay, well, how much does that cost? $30. What? <laughs> that is insane. I said, all right, well, what's your next step down? They said the next step down is two to three days, but it's not guaranteed. <laughs> it's, it's two to three days, but not guaranteed. Okay, well, how much is that? $10. $10 for two to three days, not guaranteed? <laughs> I said, what happens if I just put a stamp on it? Yeah. They said four or five days. Four or five days? <laughs> All right, well, I'm just going to take my chances here, put a stamp on it. But four or five days, I'm thinking the Pony Express was more efficient. <laughs> Pony Express would have gotten it there faster. I could, yeah. I could walk that letter from here <laughs> to where it's going in New Orleans in five days. Yeah, you could. <laughs> That's insane. And, and I don't <laughs> understand it because they're... Carrying less mail, yeah, well, and they have better technology. How are they less efficient? They're carrying more packages. Like I think that's well, really, they're not good at that either. Well, no, I'm not saying they are. I'm just saying like that's what the post, like the postal service, as far as like letters go, mm -hmm. like that's just not a thing anymore. But that's the only thing that they have the exclusive right to. Wow. Like they are, they they had the court case. Actually, uh, Lysander Spooner wrote an essay about it because he set up a. You know, I'm a big fan of Spooner. Absolutely. Um, he, he set up a competing service to the U.S. Postal Service yeah. as a letter carrier. Yeah. And, um, they shut him down. And Yeah, they shut him down. They took him to court and shut him down, argued that the Constitution didn't just give the <laughs> U.S. government the right to be the postal carrier, yeah. but gave them the exclusive right, right. to yeah. be the postal carrier. That's and the reason they took him to court about it is because he was better than them. He, yeah. was, he was more efficient and did it for less cost like it, it cost less and it worked better than the government service yeah or they wouldn't have cared right yeah exactly <laughs> so anyway so yeah now the the only thing that they're allowed that they've given themselves the exclusive right to do is be a letter carrier and so now they don't want to do that either is that what you're telling <laughs> it, me? It, that's what it feels like to me man uh, it feels like they're incapable of doing it is uh, from what what you just laid out okay <laughs> so I, I would much rather our the money that they're stealing from me go to DCFS and go to help kids in trouble and and so forth than be blown up halfway around the world obviously well yeah um, or go to innumerable other things that they spend my money on that I don't want them to spend my money on yeah. I, okay and then th <coughs> I don't have a real plan for this because I've not been feeling well for, for a while. Yeah. Um, for more than a week now. Um, so I'm not, I'm not real read up on everything that's going on because taking a lot of pain medicine. <laughs> yeah. uh, but, um, I was reading about the, um, this is like, listen to how much of a nerd Michael is. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, I've been reading about the Higgs boson, the search for the ah, Higgs boson, the, yeah. the uh, establishment of the Large Hadron Collider at CERN in Switzerland, uh, Switzerland. And I heard France. they're wanting to build an even bigger one. Yeah, of course they do. <laughs> yeah, let's I mean, do it. You know. <laughs> um, so the Large Hadron Collider cost nine billion dollars. Wow! And in today's um, money, or when it was built? When money? it was built? When was it built? Two thousand. Well, and it was also it was built on top of a project that was already there too. Oh, really? So yeah, they there was only they didn't have to do they didn't have to excavate the whole thing. Like there was already some it was started. Yeah, there was already a loop collider there. It just was lower energy and anyway, yeah, um, yeah nine billion dollars, which was mostly paid for from tax money from dozens of countries. Yeah, and um, the the writer of the the author of the book, uh, which is Sean Carroll. Um, he's a physicist out in California. Um, he was talking about how important big science like this was. And I agree. Yeah. Uh, well, we may not, well, finding the Higgs boson doesn't probably directly affect our lives. The, it's important. Yeah. The, having a better understanding of how the universe works can lead to a whole lot of different developments. Oh, without question. Right? Like the particle physicists, they're probably not affecting our lives that much, but the engineers that are taking that information sure as hell can. Yeah. And, but it's hard to measure like the value that you get yeah. out of that. And, and I agree with him that those <laughs> things are important. They need that. They need funding. Yeah. And, to get that kind of money, you're not like just gonna be able to rely on a few big donors you don't, you don't for that think, kind of thing. You don't think GoFundMe will get the job done? 
Well, actually, I think GoFundMe probably would, but historically, science yeah. like that has well, historically, it's science been, like that didn't exist. But yeah. the the big science projects in the past were generally um, paid for by some very wealthy patron that was just kind of interested. Yeah, yeah. And science is, has gotten much bigger than that. I mean, if you if you had less than the Large Hadron Collider, yeah, you don't find part of the Higgs boson or something like that. Like you, you get nothing. Yeah, yeah. Right. You've like got, you have, you've got to have the thing. Yeah, you you have to have that kind of energy input to get the results that they were looking for. Yeah, and that having that kind of that's a huge amount of energy. <laughs> Which is a lot of money, yeah, to to be able to produce that and to make protons run into each other after going through a seventeen mile loop and like this is complicated stuff, yeah. Um, and to measure it all, that's really the big thing, and and that's where probably a lot of your real advancements come from is the magnets that they have to use to keep the the particles on track, yeah. like the developments in magnets that you need probably improve magnets, um, the detectors that they had to. F- to capture all these particles as they, you know, go out from the impact. Um, you know, like the kind of technology that they have to develop just to measure the stuff is where you're going to see advancements in things that we do. Yeah. Right. But, um, anyway, my point is this though, that, yeah, I think that those things are important and, um, I, I think that they're worthwhile, uh, but it doesn't justify you stealing money to do it. Yeah, I I wholeheartedly agree. Right. I think that those things are important. I give money towards research. Yeah. But not everybody does, and it's not fair to just because you think that it's important Yeah. to agree that the money should be taken from everybody to do it. Yeah. So what do you it's not propose? Your money. <laughs> so what do you propose is I done? I propose more like a Go- GoFundMe type thing now. You, yeah. you get, scientists have to get better at communicating. Get out there. Tell people this is what we want to do. This is why we're interested because it's and if you so throw cool, if you throw climate change in there, you'll just get well, all kinds of funding. You will if you're getting it from the government. That's another that. Well, well that's my point. No, I'm trying to take this away from the government. Yeah. I'm trying to put it out there to individuals. Yeah. So get out there, make your case, get your you know Elon Musk type or. Um, what was the Apple guy? Uh, Steve Jobs? Steve, yeah. Get your Steve Jobs type out there that can go out there and sell it. And sell it. it, yeah. And tell people this is what we want and this is what we need and this is why we think it's awesome or important or just cool. Make and your like, case, yeah. Yeah, and then let people give money. Yeah. No, I agree. And I, people I will. Agree. Oh, absolutely. I mean, and yeah. you, you do have plenty of Elon Musk types that'll give you millions of dollars or whatever. I'm, I'm sure. Yeah. And, you know, Jeff Bezos and people like that that are just have a lot of money and also think that that's cool and will give you a lot of money. Yeah. But you've got a bunch of people like me that'll give you, you know, a 50, bit. 100, $1,000. Yeah. I mean, it adds up. There's yeah. 8 billion people almost in this planet. Like, yeah. Yeah. How, how many of them have to... In fact, if every one of those people had given CERN a dollar, yeah, they'd almost paid for the Large Hadron Collider. Yeah, there you go. One dollar one time. Yeah. So, got way off track there. I don't know. <laughs> I didn't have much of a plan here yeah. anyway. I was going to say, was all this on your notes? No, <laughs> not a word of it. Yeah. Not a word. Uh yeah, so go back and listen to that interview. It was a good interview. It was a good interview. And yeah. pass that around. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> anyway, um, th- so we did miss some news. Uh, yeah. The the main thing was the um, International Court of Justice decision. Yes. Which was kind of stupid, I, I thought. Uh, the, essentially well, what they said was, the actions of Israel may be construed as genocidal, and this deserves more investigation. But we're not going to ask them, we're not going to enforce any kind of stoppage. Yeah. And we're just going to ask, urge, I think is the word that they use, yeah. urge Israel to, you know, stop doing genocidal things. Yeah. Well, but let's be honest here. If they had issued some kind of declaration saying that that the, uh, some kind of declaration for a ceasefire, mm-hmm. um, who would have enforced it? Nobody. 
Exactly. Yeah. So, and that that's the danger here. Like, they're not in a situation where they can put a stop to this. Because mm-hmm. the truth is, is if they had, they would have been exposed as far as having no power. Right. And they would be done. Absolutely. I agree 100%. I mean, that's, that's just, so, I mean, it is frustrating that they went through all of this for basically nothing, Mm -hmm. but it's really all that they could do. Yeah. uh, Unfortunately. I mean, you know, it's just the situation is what it is. The only people that can really, truly stop Israel is the U S and we've shown we have no appetite to do so. Right. I mean, that's, that's just, that's this. And I was thinking about this the other day, like that really is the scary scenario here is like we so we're the only people that truly have the 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 force necessary to stop them and I'll be honest with you even if we did have the right president who was willing to make that stand which by the way there's not one running that I know of yeah other maybe Rectum Wall I don't know yeah I, um, well I suspect I would suspect well, but I don't know um here's the the thing though is that it's easy for us to stop them just by not supporting them yeah. I well, mean, that, that. I guess that's not easy. That doesn't end it immediately, but that severely limits Israel's their capabilities. Their capabilities, yeah. yeah. And that's fair. But but that, that I guess part of the scary thing is is that, for one, we don't really have a candidate that has that position, mm-hmm. for one. Like, I mean, that's just not really out there. Yeah. Um, and for two, even well, if we— Well, all the libertarian candidates, I think, have that Would position. have that position. I agree. I, I, I'm assuming that. I, mm-hmm. I, I, I hope so. That. <laughs> yeah, I'm certainly I, not supporting any of them that don't. Yeah. Um, but but we don't have that. Even if we did have that candidate, let's say it was the libertarian, I still don't think, like you say, I think that we would have the ability to slow them down, but I don't think we could stop them. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think if we, we, we told them to stop and we pulled our funding from them, that they would just give us the finger and continue on. Well, they would have more to worry about, though, then. Because yeah. if we weren't supporting them and we didn't pledge defense of them, then yeah. they would have to worry about their neighbors too. Yeah. They would have to worry about a united <coughs> Arab. You got to turn more or something. All like, right. Turn about, more, get more off <laughs> access. Right. It's, yeah. yeah. Sorry. Lean way out. Something. All right. Um, the, uh, they would have to worry about a united Arab world against them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that, and that should be the fear. Mm-hmm. But, well, and they're creating that. Oh, anyway, without question, uh, there's a there's a whole lot of um, groups that have been um, antagonistic with each other in the Arab world for a long time that are together on this issue. Yeah. Yeah. So. so. Well, and at the same time, um, I actually I want to throw in I want to throw in a clip right here as long as Ooh. we're talking about widening widening a war in the Middle East. Um here's here's a clip from Lloyd Austin and we'll just we'll throw it in right here and then we'll keep talking about this. All right. Our teammates were killed by radical militias backed by Iran and operating inside Syria and Iraq. In the aftermath of the vile Hamas terrorist assault on Israel on October seventh, terrorist groups backed by Iran and funded by Iran have tried to create even more turmoil, including the Houthis attacking commercial shipping in the Red Sea. So this is a dangerous moment in the Middle East. We will continue to work to avoid a wider conflict in the region. But we will take all necessary actions to defend the United States, our interests, and our people. And we will respond when we choose where we choose, and how we choose. All right. We want to avoid a wider war in the Middle East. And the way we plan to do that is by bombing more people. That always works. Yeah. So he says that we will do whatever we need to to protect our people and our interests and so forth, protect the United States. Nobody over there is protecting the United States. Like, the United States is not threatened by any of these groups at all. Yeah. Um. But protect our people and protect our interests. Our interests is like everything that's, you know, we've ex- just expanded that term to mean a- anything we feel like, you know, being involved in is our interest, which is everything in the world. And so, therefore, we have the excuse for military power everywhere. Yeah. Um, but he says, you know, we will do whatever we have to to protect these things, except for <laughs> the two things that would actually do something. 
One, it's not half our people there in the first place. Yeah. Like we had these three guys die, three, two men and a woman die at Tower 22. They're there to support the illegal op- occupation of Syria. Yeah. And Iraq, really. I mean, I guess like Iraq wants us out. They've told us that over and over and over again, but we said not no, going we're not anywhere. leaving. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, and the other thing is to stop supporting Israel slaughtering Gazans. Yeah. Those are the things that we can do. That, that would get us out of this fight in no time. Yeah, yeah. Especially with the Houthis. Yeah. Because like that's the whole reason they're doing this. Well, that's the whole reason all these groups are doing this. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the they started attacking U.S. troops after October 8th when the U.S. threw its support behind Israel, Israel's destruction of Gaza. Yeah. And that's, I mean, that, and it, it's really dangerous too. And then I think... Here's the point that I really want to make about this. Um, there's a couple of these terms that we're going to use in this podcast that are propaganda terms, I, I think. And the yeah. first one that we've come across now is Iran-backed militias. <laughs> yeah. Now, Iran-backed militias means any Shiite group of men with rifles Militants. in the whole of the Middle East. Yeah. Yeah. That's an Iran backed militia. So they use this no matter what, even though the State Department has admitted with this, you know, this bombing in Jordan, um, or the whatever you, the uh drone it was drone, drone strike. Yeah. Yeah. Drone, yeah. Um bombing though. Really. Yeah, yeah. I'll try and be more precise, I suppose. But the State Department and the Pentagon have admitted that they have absolutely no evidence that Iran was involved in this. Yeah. None whatsoever. Zero evidence. Yeah. But everybody's going to be an Iran-backed militia. Yeah. And the whole purpose of that is to get all of you, all of us out here thinking, oh, Iran is our enemy. Iran is our enemy. We better get Iran. Go get Iran. It's, to, it's, it's a setup to support the future war with Iran that we don't need. No, and that we don't want to fight. Like, yeah. everything I've seen has said, like, that's a war like we ain't fought in a long time. Yeah. Um, and the other part of that is that is, as we keep uh, advocating all this, we're putting our people more in danger. Yeah. Because we're embedded with these groups all over the place. All these Iran-backed militias. Yeah. That's who we were fighting with. <laughs> Fighting with yeah. against ISIS. Not fighting yeah. against against ISIS. They were on our side fighting yeah. against ISIS. Yeah. Until we made the flip. Until we switched sides. Yep. Yep. And that's, you know, we talked about that in relation to uh, Yemen just recently. We were on the side of the Houthis fighting against Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula. Then we switched sides to fight with Al-Qaeda <laughs> yeah. against the Houthis to placate Saudi yeah. uh, after making the um, JCPOA with Iran. Yeah. Which made the world a safer place. Yeah. That, one of the few things that uh, Obama did absolutely right was that deal. Yeah. It just took away an excuse for war in the Middle East. Yeah. Now it's gone. Thanks, Trump. Yeah. And thanks, Biden, for that matter, because he could have gotten right back into that deal when he came into office, but he didn't. Nope. Just chose not to. So, um, Khatib Hezbollah, uh, go back and read the article that I wrote for anti-war about, um, Soleimani's assassination in January, 2020, I guess that was. Yeah. Maybe. Is that right? Might've been 2021. No, I think it was 2020. Yeah. Anyway. Um, yeah, you can, you can look me up on, uh, antiwar.com. I wrote a long article about the Soleimani assassination and the things that led to it and the things, you know, it was... There's a lot of history in there. And, uh, <coughs> but the, the main point here is that Khatib Hezbollah, we were fighting with them in Iraq yeah. against the regime that we took down there until we switched sides because we realized that we just handed the government of Iraq to <laughs> Iran. The other side, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, but we were fighting against the Sunnis. The Sunnis are Al Qaeda, the Sunnis are ISIS. Yeah. Iran-backed militias are Shiite. They've never attacked us outside the Middle East. Yeah. Well, and that's not who. That's not the justification for the terror war. Yeah. 
We're on the other side in the terror war. Yeah. Th- these are our friends in the terror war, but we're fighting them now for Israel. Yeah. It's absurd. Yeah. All, I mean, all of this just goes to show as far as I'm concerned, like we just need to, to withdraw from that whole area. Yeah. It's not our problem. It's really not like it doesn't have to be. Um, and Israel wouldn't be so antagonistic if they weren't so certain that the U S would back them. And, yeah. and particularly Netanyahu thinks that he's got the U S wrapped around his little finger. The truth is he does. Well, yes. I mean, that's, I mean, that's, that's just what it is. Mm-hmm. That is his big selling point to the to the people of Israel. Yeah. Is that I've got the US under control. Yeah. Well and the I truth, can point the US wherever I want. That's his thing. He's actually said essentially that. He's on tape. <laughs> yeah. Well, and the truth is he's not wrong. Like, I mean, he does. And the the other thing that I don't know if he realizes, but I think whoever's in charge in Israel will have that type of power. I I mean it may be unique. I don't. I don't think it's something that's unique to him. Yeah, I think he's um, probably better at it than a lot of them. But because he's uh, been doing it for so long. Well, he speaks English really well, and he. Yeah. yeah there's, he's got some advantages. Yeah, that's in fair. In this regard, um, he's got connections. Yeah. So, uh, you know that that may be true, but yeah, we're just we we keep switching sides over there. We're never on the right side. Yeah. <laughs> It, we just keep getting ourselves deeper and deeper, and we're the Khatib Hezbollah, the these these groups in our, in Iraq, these, and we just hit killed another um, uh, leader in Baghdad, bombed oh, a guy yeah. in Baghdad like today or yesterday or whatever. It was yesterday, yeah. Um, like th- this is a group that we call our allies that wants us out of their country, and now we're bombing their people in their country. Yeah, I, I this just goes. This can go so badly because we're we're alongside some of these groups, and some of these groups are part of the Iraqi military. Yeah, that we're attacking <laughs> yeah. with bases in their country. <coughs> I just see. I can just very easily see how this goes wrong where we're suddenly getting shot in the back by guys that were fighting with us. Yeah. yeah. And it doesn't, it doesn't protect the United States at all. Mm-hmm. And in fact, it makes the United States more of a target. I mean, the nine 11 attacks didn't happen because they hated our freedom and all that <laughs> BS that we got for years and years. The attacks in the United States were launched by a bunch of, unhappy Saudis and Egyptians are allies in the Middle East, Saudis and Egyptians, because we were propping up their brutal governments. Yeah. Right. And that we'd been bombing, um, Iraq for a decade. De- it was a decade at that point. Yeah. 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 And starving children. Yeah. Yeah. So here we are again, and we're about to see it get really bad in Gaza too. Uh, we're talking about Yemen um, a couple of weeks ago and how, you know, they had what 370,000 people die, most of them from starvation and disease as a result of the war. We're about to start seeing that in Gaza, too. Oh, yeah. yeah. It, like, it's about to get a lot worse. It's pretty bad in terms now. In terms of casualties. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, yeah, like, because, it's already well, 28,000 because... people or something yeah, like because that. because they don't have any in- infrastructure left. I mean, mm-hmm. it's all just destroyed. Yeah. And that was the point, and that's why it's genocidal. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, so it, I don't know what else to say about this. It, it's just, just it's a frustrating situation, especially because our government is doing this in our name. Mm-hmm. I mean, that, to me, that's the worst part about it. I mean, it would be bad enough if Israel was doing this on its own, and we were just standing by not stopping them. But yeah. we're aiding this. Like, we're, we're a cobble war here. Yeah. Was, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I I had something in my head the other day, and I can't seem to put it together right now um, in my head again about how we are um, we got involved in a genocide to help defend a genocide yeah. that we'd already defended. <laughs> you know, that right, yeah. just you know why why do people in the Middle East hate us? <laughs> Maybe it's because we sponsor the wholesale slaughter of citizens in country after country after country. 
Yeah. Yeah. I, I just, I wouldn't like us either. No. Yeah. I don't particularly like our government right now. I'm like, it, it's shameful to me. Yeah. What, what we're doing here. Uh, so anyway, I, we should move on to some other topic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm just going to get, Either well, angrier or more upset, one of the two. Oh, well, okay. There's only so much of my ranting that people can <laughs> tolerate. I think. Well, did you want to talk about the the Michigan shooter's mother ber- verdict? If you want, because I didn't read anything about it at all. So I did do a little bit of reading on it today. Um, so I mean, I don't know how much of this everybody knows. I mean, the story is pretty out there, but there was a mass shooting. I'm not sure a year or so maybe ago in Miss in Michigan. Um, this kid took a gun in the school and shot a bunch of people with it. Um, and what they've decided to do, which he's already been convicted, he's serving life. Um, but the, they, they're charging the mother and the father with, um, I think it's involuntary manslaughter. Okay. They convicted the mother of four counts and they, she hasn't been sentenced yet, but she's looking at 15 years for this. Um, for, for not doing, I mean, I guess the argument is, is that she provided that because they had given him the gun. It was a gun that he had been given to, but given by his parents. Mm -hmm. Like that's the argument is that, that they gave him the gun and then he went out and did this and you know, they're culpable. Okay. So they, they've tried to go after gun manufacturers in this way. Yeah. in, In the past. Um, and couldn't make it stick. And for good reason, I would say. Yeah. Uh, I I don't know how they, so now they're going after the parents instead. Okay. Answer me this. All right. (laughs) With this logic. Does that mean (coughs) that anytime a child misuses a gift that was given to them by their parents, that the parents can be held liable for any damages done? Like, okay. So what if, what if uh, this kid goes out, Okay. What if you're a grown up? You're in college. Yeah. Your parents gave you a car. Yeah. So we're making the rest of this legal. That's what I'm trying to do here. Yeah. Um, you're 21. You go out drinking one night. Yeah. You get really drunk. You get in an accident on the way home and kill somebody. Yeah. Your parents gave you that car. Are they responsible for that death? Is it manslaughter because you used the car that was given to you by your parents to kill somebody else? So I'm obviously no attorney. And we have some that listen, so we'd like to hear from them. Yeah. Um, but I have heard attorneys on TV lay that same exact thing out, except with high schoolers. Yeah. That, like, you give your teenage son, turns 16, you give him a car, he goes out and makes a dumb decision, drinks and drives and kills somebody, and not only are they charged on the son, they're charged on the parents, too. Because you because under this logic, that follows. Mm-hmm. Um, like I say, there's never been a case like this before, at least... That's what I keep hearing is that this is a, this is one of those new law, novel legal theories. Um, but they've convicted the mother. The father still stands trial. So, I mean, maybe a different jury will find a different outcome for him. Well, surely that'll get appealed, though, too, right? I would think so. But, I mean, the, I mean how often does stuff get overturned on appeals? I know it happens, but I'm just saying, like, this it's... On novel legal theories? Probably more frequently than other things, I would yeah. ha- I hope. I don't know. Um, it it just it it scares me that that's the type of road we're heading down. That yeah. that you can be liable for something. Like I say, and I I would like to just kind of put this out there. Like like that situation sucks. Like it sucks for the 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 parents of the kids that were killed. And like I mean, it's it, like I get wanting vengeance and wanting somebody to pay for this, mm-hmm. but. I just, I, I, it doesn't follow to me. Yeah. It doesn't restore anything anyway. No. Um, it, it, like I said, it just destroys more lives. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, well, I don't know much about this. I'll look into it. We can talk about it more on a future podcast. Yeah. Yeah. It's like I said, I mean, it's going to, like I said, this story isn't over because like they still got a sentencer and then they've got to do the father. So, okay. I mean, we'll be hearing more about this, but it's definitely, it's, it's an, it's an interesting case. Yeah. So, um, how about the, uh, the Georgia DA, is that her title? Fannie Willis. Oh yeah. 
Yeah. I don't know a whole you know lot about this. I know about it, but I don't know a whole lot about it. Okay. This to me is just a, you know, just a really good example of government corruption. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> the reason people are making such a big deal out of this situation is because uh, Fannie Willis appointed a um, an inexperienced uh, personal injury attorney um, to be part of the prosecution team against Donald Trump on the racketeering and so forth. Mm. And this guy had never even tried a criminal case before. Really? And uh, he was getting paid something like $650,000 a year of taxpayer money to do this. Yeah. Um, and it turns out that she's sleeping with him. Oh, wow. <laughs> and uh, well, good the, for her. Yeah. The reason that it's it's made such big news is because it's the Donald Trump case, of course. Mm -hmm. But I, to me, that's just irrelevant. Yeah. I, I don't care which, what case it is. Yeah. Uh, now, he says that he wasn't sleeping with her before he got the job. No. Yeah. I don't know it what that It just seems exactly. hard to believe he got that job. And they're also making a big deal out of that they were going places together and he was paying for tickets and so forth yeah. uh, with the money that he's making from the taxpayer because she gave him this job. Yeah. All right. Little fishy, but he says, you know, well, they were splitting costs and he's just putting it on his credit card and that, you know, that kind of thing. All right, fine, maybe. Well, hey, uh, if he's putting on his credit card, then he's not using his, the government money to pay for it. He's just yeah, racking yes, up that's debt. that's his income. Yeah. How, you, how do you think he's paying the credit card? I mean, is he? Well, I assume so. I, <laughs> maybe he's just um, racking up debt. And so they were denying all of this, except that at the same time that all these, all this was going on, this guy's wife was divorcing him because of his affair with Fannie Willis. Oh, wow. Yeah. And so information came out because of that court case. Yeah. That, yeah, this is actually what was happening. So initially Fannie Willis denies it. And then she says that it's just racism because <laughs> he's, he's a black man. And she, uh, she appointed three attorneys to the case and they're only asking questions about this guy, the black guy. <laughs> well, like, yeah, that's the only one that you're sleeping with. Yeah. Right. <laughs> So uh, that's, at least that we know of. <laughs> well, good point. Maybe she's equal opportunity. And, and <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, may, maybe she's the racist because she's only sleeping with the black guy. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> um, so but to me, this just this just represents your your <laughs> typical government c corruption. They have. I mean, I don't know why is this attorney's making this much money for this kind of case anyway, paid for by the government. I like, it just seems obscene to start with. Cause they to gotta me. get Trump. Yeah. Gotta get Trump. So you, you hire an inexperienced personal injury attorney. <laughs> right. To do it. Yeah. Um, and you know, now it's just like, <laughs> I don't know, everybody's attacking her cause, she, cause they're racist or whatever. And I don't know, to me, it just, it just it's was just a perfect absurd. example of, of government corruption. Somebody in power, um, appoints a friend. I, I think, you know, maybe he was like really enjoying it. So he's not gonna, you don't hear this from guys a whole lot, but I, I would see it as possible, um, like sexual harassment in terms of, you know, maybe she was like, uh, if you, uh, you know, you'll, I'll give you this job if you'll sleep with me and you know, that kind of thing. I don't yeah. know. Um, Anyway, it's it's kind of funny to me, and I I felt like I had more to say, but like, yeah. these pills are kicking in, making my brain not work quite right, and I didn't make a lot of notes because I'm because your brain's not quite working yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Mm. Sorry, everybody. I I yeah. promise I'll be better. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so hires some guy that she fancies. Fanny yeah. fancies. Yeah. And then he, never mind. I'm not, I'm not going to go down that road. It would be <laughs> funny, but it's also a little lewd. Yeah. So I'll leave it alone. Yeah. Um, I think we all get the implications. Yeah. The taxpayer money towards this kind of thing. And a lot of taxpayer money towards this kind of thing. Yeah. And, um, it's, the whole thing is just absurd. Yeah. And so she was like, you know, she was the hero for a little while. And now, not so much. And there's also uh, some footage of her from before all of this saying that she wouldn't tolerate any kind of um, 
sexual uh, harassment within the ranks and like yeah. uh, so on th- this kind of uh, thing um yeah it's funny amazing theater yeah. of the absurd you know yeah uh i did want to talk about the border crossing stuff mostly i want to talk about this uh this conflict between texas and the federal government yeah because there's some interesting stuff going on so which this. side are you on uh, it doesn't matter. All right. Uh, I, okay. I I have problems with both sides. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so the Texas law enforcement is trying to reinforce their border. Yeah. And, Good for them. Um, federal law enforcement is saying that they don't have the authority to do that. Not good for them. They suck. Well, okay. Fine. Um. I appreciate your commentary there. It's very insightful. <laughs> Not a problem. Many times. That's why I'm here. So the Supreme Court said, yeah, federal authorities have um, have the power in this. Yeah. And now I understand why. So Texas is making the claim. Let me let me just present both sides really, really quickly. Uh, Texas is making the claim that this is an emergency and that the Constitution gives them the power to defend against invasion without federal buy-in in the case of an emergency. Okay. And the federal government is saying that they have power over foreign policy, which control of the border is a part of. Okay. And they're both right. In yeah. terms of what the Constitution of their, of their gives their them, arguments. Yeah, yeah, what the Constitution gives them power to do. So that's the the side that the Supreme Court took in putting a stay on the injunction, or however that worked out. Um, is that yes, uh, federal law enforcement um, has precedent over local law enforcement or state law enforcement in matters of foreign policy. That that is essentially the purpose of the federal government is to handle the foreign policy of the United States as a collective. Okay. And uh, so federal law enforcement has control of the border because control of the border is an aspect of foreign policy because it because it can affect relations with other nations. Well, they should do a better job of controlling that border. Though. I I don't disagree with that in in the plainest sense. Now at yeah. the same time, um. Texas is right that in cases of an emergency that they have the power to act unilaterally to protect their state and citizens. Yeah. Now, <coughs> I think that there's plenty of debate to be had whether this constitutes an emergency invasion yeah. of women and children. Oh, but we can't forget military-aged men. This is another one of those propagandistic phrases. Yeah. Military-aged men, military-aged men, military-aged men. You could also say working-aged men. Yeah. Depends on how you plan to use these men. Yeah. Um, so, obviously, I mean, the, I, there's been some... The, the Border Patrol has been hamstrung, in some sense, by the Biden administration. Yeah. Um, the Biden administration does have a responsibility to uphold the law on the books, which they're not doing. Yeah. Um, and so you can understand um, Texas's desire as they're being, they're, they're being overrun. Yeah. Their resources are being overwhelmed. No, I, they're not being overrun. <laughs> um, I don't their, know, man. Their resources are being overwhelmed by um, the, the, the flow uh, of immigrants. illegal immigrants. Yes. Yeah. All right. So, but to call it an invasion, I mean, is a little here's here's ridiculous. here's my and, thing. It's mm-hmm. so you said that they're that they're um, overwhelming the resources. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, an invasion may be a little bit of an overstatement, but you can't say that that's not a problem, and that that's not a problem that's affecting the taxpayers of Texas. Yeah, but that's a again, it's a government problem. That yeah. Okay, you you take away government involvement in all of this, and there is no problem anymore. If you take the government yeah. out of it entirely, there is no problem. I mean, I don't necessarily disagree with that, but the reality on the ground is the reality on the ground. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, these people are coming in and overwhelming the system, 
And that's like that affects the people who what live in the state. What system are they overwhelming though? I mean, I don't know specifically, but I'm sure the schools, I'm sure the hospital systems, like I, well, that's, these people that have just always, crossed the border, that's they're not always going to been, school. Well, and then where are these people staying at? I mean, I I heard a story just last week that they shut down a school in New York. Yeah. For for immigrants, like that's mm-hmm. you can't tell me that that's not like a serious, like that's a problem. Right. And there there's got to be some kind of solution. And if they're doing that in New York over the amount of Im- immigrants that have been bust up there, what do you think Texas is dealing with? Mm-hmm. Oh no, I, I'm sure. Um, the here's the thing though: no matter how hard you crack down, you're not stopping that. Yeah. Well, I mean, you're not stopping. That's not the problem. Yeah. The problem isn't that there's not enough inf- enforcement. The problem isn't that there's not enough cops yeah. or militarism on the border. <laughs> um, the problem is all the benefits that draw them in here in the first place. Oh, well, I've got now, plenty of problems with that. Just, it, it, yeah, and it's not just like, it would be fine if it's just, they're coming here for jobs. Yeah. But they're not just coming here for jobs. They're coming here because they know that they'll be taken care of by the U.S. government no, just by arriving. But, but the idea that we can't enforce, like I'm not saying we can absolutely stop every person from crossing the border, but we can secure the border. Like that's not, it's it's not like that's this impossible task that just It can't is an be. impossible task. That's not true. Like we put up a fence and patrol it. Like it sounds like the razor wire is working pretty well. Like I'm just saying, right in that one spot. Okay. I mean, there's a whole lot of border there. Yeah. You can't. All right. So here, here this has always been my problem with people that just want to lock down the border. I'm not um, saying not let people in at all. Like I'm, I'm no, okay for that. lock down the border and have a a place of entry and let's mm-hmm. do this. Like we know who's coming in. Yeah. Um. To me, this is a whole lot like prohibition. Okay. All right. So the problem isn't the alcohol. The problem is that the alcohol is illegal. Yeah. Okay. Right. So then you create crime yeah. around it. So now you have uh, a lot more violence because yeah. you've created a black market. Yeah. Um, it, it's the same thing with <laughs> these, these border crossings. Like you've created a market for coyotes. You've created a market for trafficking. You've yeah. created a market for for the import of drugs and so forth, yeah. um, for the mule stuff. And, you know, yeah. like you've created all these markets by your rules on the other side. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of this, a lot of the problems that arise would just go away without all those rules. And you yeah, have but created then, but a then what, demand But then again. what's the, then what's the repercussions of that? People just coming over the border freely. Yeah. Like that doesn't sound good. Why not? Because we got enough people here. These people have... We don't it would, have it, enough it, it people here. Di- it would there be... There so hey, many empty here's, jobs. Here, here's the thing. It would be different if these people were coming over and had a plan. Mm-hmm. Like it, like like what we've talked about with the sponsorship thing, where they're coming over, they've got a job lined up, they've got housing lined up, they're ready to be here. The problem is that's not what's happening. These people are showing up here, and there's no plan for them. They're in, they're in high schools because they can't find places to house them. Like, that's the problem. Um, and that's what has to be addressed here. And so your answer again is, is what, to though? shut down the border. How do you do that? I'm telling you, the the it's so not what, rocket 1, science. 1,200 miles of Walls border. work, man. Like, I'm just... No, they don't. Come on. They don't work. They All they do is slow things down a little bit, but then you go over them or under them or around them. Walls don't actually Fair do Fair enough. Like, all I'm saying is, is put up a wall and patrol it and let's at least make an effort here to stop letting people in. Like but, that's that's my position. Like if government has any any purpose at all, it's to protect its borders. Like it's absurd to not do that. It's to protect the borders against some kind of militarism. Uh, it's not to protect the borders from people just seeking a better life. Hey, I'm all for people wanting a better life. I'm not. I'm not saying that. All I'm saying is, is they're not going to get it here when we're just letting them flood in here. Well, but we've told them taking, that they will exactly get that. That they, if they just get here, then they'll be taken care of for a while. That's yeah. the problem. Well, I and I fully agree that that's a huge problem. Yeah. To me, like, you're just you're throwing out the baby with the bathwater, and and your answer to a problem that's created by government is to create more government. That's yeah. what that's essentially what you're proposing the, here is you're saying, all right, government's actions have incentivized people to come over here without a plan. Yeah. 
Yeah. And so the way we answer that problem is to strengthen that government. No, it, that strengthened Dude, government works against all of us, not just against those people. You've and, got to, you've got to live in what reality is. And that, this is my whole problem with, um, like, so I'm an anarchist and I do believe in, in anarchy. Like that, that is where I'm at. It's a shame y'all couldn't see my face when you said that. But the problem is, is things you can't, you've got to do things in a certain order. And so if we just open up the border and keep everything else as is, you're talking about collapsing the country. Like, and I'm, I don't feel like I'm being hyperbolic there. I, I think you are. Uh, collapsing the country. I mean, the, um, it's, dude, it's a serious problem. Look at, like, look at what's happening in these lefty cities that have been, uh, yeah. um, what do they call this? Is, uh, the, the sanctuary cities. Sanctuary cities. Yeah. Thank you. Um, they're reversing that policy really fast. Yeah, because of the repercussions of the people coming in. Exactly. Maybe that is the answer. Like, okay, so you you have this ideological, you know, view of like how great immigrants are and we'll just let them in and they can come here and we can ignore all the rules and so forth. And then you're faced with the reality of it and you're like, okay, we can't function that way. So instead of the instead of your option, which is we increase the power of government to try and you know, keep all these other things, but then limit the number of people that come in. Maybe you reduce the government by saying, okay, obviously all these ideas you had that your government was going to provide all these things for these people, it can't be done. So then you just take away those things. You reduce government instead of but, strengthening but do government. do you really think that that's what's going to happen? I, See, think that, I, I think we're watching it happen. Well, maybe you're right. If you're right, I, I hope you are, but I just don't think that's the way this plays out. Yeah. I mean, I, that's not that's not what I see happening. Mm -hmm. I mean, and, and if that's the case, then, hey, more I'll freely admit that I'm wrong here. Yeah. Well, OK, so you're not seeing it from the governments yet, but you're you're seeing pressure build up. Oh, yeah. In the constituencies to put an end to this. No, I you're right about that. That's how that stuff gets changed. Yeah, that's exactly how that stuff gets changed. Yeah. Um, those people have to have to run for reelection. Yeah. Oh, and it's going to be a problem. Like this next election, I think will be interesting. Yeah, especially so you're in some, some of these big, big turnovers cities. in New York City and in Chicago and some of these places. Yeah, I think uh, you're right about that. So I, I think that that we are like we're but, essentially providing the answer by testing the system but and showing you, that it didn't work. Do you think small government Republicans is going to be who wins those elections? Um, I mean, I don't know. I mean, maybe. I, I mean, I maybe. Mean, that, I don't you know, know. That's certainly kind of the shift that has. Uh, that I've been hearing about in Chicago yeah, is yeah. that they're like, okay, well, well that's enough of these Democrats that are giving all our stuff away to other people. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's only one alternative <laughs> essentially. <laughs> Two party country. system. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I mean, I mean it's interesting to are, see, are there any small government Republicans left? That is a better question. I don't well, know. That's, I, don't, I mean, yeah. they don't, I don't know that that even exists anymore. <laughs> right. So, yeah, um, no. but it's, I mean, there's certainly a push for, um, less giveaways. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's the big draw to the immigration anyway, yeah. is all the giveaways. Well, I mean, that's, that's the truth. It, it used, it used to be jobs. Yeah. Now it's welfare that draws yeah. people in. Yeah. All right. So, but you get rid of the welfare, then you go back to the jobs. Yeah. If you keep the welfare and strengthen the border, you haven't fixed your problem at all. Well, I'm all for removing the welfare. Like that's, I'm not saying that that's not my position. I'm just saying that that's a better answer to the problem. Yeah, because well, I, because one well, of those I don't, things I don't disagree is reducing government, and the other one is I, is, is increasing it. I still think, and I, I think that you have to you have to think about the consequences of the answer to the border being give more power to U.S. law enforcement. Hey, you know, think about that. Anybody that knows me knows how I feel about. I know law that's why I'm trying to make this <laughs> argument to you. Yeah. Um, I still think you have to control the border, though. I don't. I still don't think that you. And and all I'm asking is that we. Know, I like people. The idea of people signing the guest book. Yeah, like that's that's kind yeah. of what I'm getting at here. Is I like we need some kind of. But but even you know anytime you talk about controlling the border, like what I'm thinking of is central government deciding how many of what kind of people are allowed in here. Well, no, that's then you not. Got a, then you got a socialist immigration system. You got a, a, a central government that's saying, "Well, we only want the best and the brightest." Think about it, Trump, even like, "Oh, well, we want the we want their scientists and engineers and so on." 
No, yeah. we've got those in this country. What we need is people to go out pick cabbage in the fields. Yeah. That's yeah. not the people that they're letting in. <laughs> like when the government controls the border. That's not yeah. the people that they're letting in. They're trying to let in, you know, professional positions, but yeah. We don't need those professional positions. We need the manual labor. Yeah, we need manual labor because Americans don't want to do that. Yeah. Yeah. No, there's something And it's to still got to get sure. done. Oh yeah. Yeah. No, there's definitely something to that. Yeah, we had a huge problem with that in this state yeah. because they cracked down on the uh, immigrant workers. Yeah. And then we had, you know, just stuff dying in the fields. Yeah, exactly. No, I agree with that. Um, I, I still think you have to have some kind of security at the border. Though. I mean, I think that you have to have some level of security at the border, but I think that the, the direction, uh, like, this is a way of controlling immigration is not. Yeah the right approach. Yeah. Um, immigration is not the problem really at the border. Yeah. I, I mean, it, it's, it's looking it's, like it right now, be, but it, it's looking like it right now. Again, you know, it's like, well, you know, the real problem is the mafia during prohibition. Yeah. But it, yeah, the, the mafia only exists because of the prohibition. Yeah. Yeah. I like I say, I agree with all of that. Um, and I, I think I that still that's don't the know kind of border that, problem. That's your immigration problem. <coughs> I'm still skeptical on that one, but but maybe I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just yeah. saying I'm not bought in. That's fine. Yeah. Work on you bit by bit. Hey, hey, keep keep grinding, man. Um, so I did want to just like for last time bring up some of these propaganda terms because I keep cuss. I keep oh, they're hearing everywhere. them and keep hearing them and keep hearing them. And it's, it's, you know, to push you in a direction where you pick the enemy that they want you to pick. Um, yeah. so you have, which by the, the way, last time was Russia. So, right. Like just bear well, that. And in, it still is. It still is. And it hadn't went away. I'm just <laughs> yeah. saying, but it, except Zelensky but, is looking more and more foolish this way. And, Oh, they just, uh, fired Zeluzhny, right. Um, yeah. and, uh, we're going to throw this in real quick before the end. I was really trying to close up, but, right. um, he, he just fired a uh, Zeluzhny, which was his military. Um, yeah, the, the head military guy. I don't remember the title. Um, and, uh, Zeluzhny was like, yeah, I'm not quitting. Yeah. And, um, the army was like, yeah, we like that guy. <laughs> so we're going to keep listening to him. Yeah. So now you got, a, now you got an, an, a natural coup. Yeah. Happening. Yeah. Um, and so Victoria <laughs> Newland had to go over there and negotiate with him. Yeah. Yeah. What the, the with Zel him and Zelensky to, to settle to this without a coup. Really? Um, I didn't, I wasn't aware of any of that. Yeah. <laughs> That's interesting. That's, it's, it's a funny story. You know, this all started with a, a coup that Victoria Newland negotiated. <laughs> and now she's negotiating away from a coup yeah. um, that could easily have happened because the, you know, if the military's on the side, I mean, that was literally could have been like a just a, a military coup, coup in Ukraine yeah. where the the head of the army took over the country because the civilian leader of the country fired him and he said no and the army was on his side. Yeah. That would be wild. Mm -hmm. Um well I've heard something about that Russia may have like a big spring offensive coming up or something that Yeah, I mean they they could easily enough that yeah. this war is one for Russia. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I wonder, like, I keep thinking back to this guy I talked to at this bar in New Orleans like six months ago, and I was arguing with him about this stuff, and I was telling him six months ago that, like, Ukraine cannot win, that Russia already has it won, yeah. that there's no, it's inevitable that Russia will win unless NATO and the U.S. get troops Directly on the ground. Directly involved, yeah. yeah. Um, and he was like, well, I don't think I agree with that. And I was like, well, just wait and see. Yeah. I don't really particularly want to talk to that guy again, but I... You'd be curious to see where he's at now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. He's still drinking the Kool-Aid or not? Yeah. So, anyway. Because, yeah. you know, I was right. Yeah. Well, <laughs> uh, but I bring all of that up just to kind of drive home, like, this propaganda thing works mm -hmm. because just like your guy you're talking about there, yeah. like, like he's a product of that Russia propaganda. Yeah. Um. Yeah, so, yeah, so absolutely. It's, it's important, like these ter pro terms that are being used now, it's important at least that our listeners recognize mm -hmm. what these are and what's being done to us. Yeah, these are the three that have been standing out to me recently um, to pay attention to. Iran-backed militia. Yeah. Hamas-controlled health ministry. 
Yeah. And military aged males crossing the border. Yeah. Yeah. It's to give you the impression that there's an invasion on our southern border that we're about to get taken over from the inside. Yeah. Um, that Iran is in control of everything bad in the Middle East. Um, and that anything that the that comes out of Gaza is a lie. Yeah. Exactly. So and this is uh, like I said, they wouldn't be throwing this propaganda out there if they don't have something on the horizon here they're fixing to push. Mm. They're already pushing. Yeah. Well, um, war with Iran. Yeah. Well um, that's that's I actually what had it a is. Lindsey Graham clip that I was gonna play, but I decided not to. Um, that, that guy will, that will maybe save for a future podcast. Dude, he had some doozies this week. He had the blood on your hands when uh, when that's, Zuckerberg. That's, yeah, oh, that's the that, clip that oh, I was going to play. Is that the yeah, one? Yeah, exactly. Like yeah. it's. I just assumed you had a that, different one. Yeah, no, no. That Lindsey Graham would stand up in front of <laughs> in front of the Senate and tell Mark Zuckerberg that he has blood on his <laughs> hands, that he's got a product that's killing people. Yeah. It unironically. Yeah, from the guy who's the biggest weapons. I yeah, don't know. he's such a war monster. Bought, bought off by the weapons companies <laughs> completely. Yeah, like bought, sold, and paid for. Man, never like, saw a war he didn't like. Ever. He's calling Mark Zuckerberg a murderer. Oh, yeah. anyway. Yeah. So uh, yeah, maybe we'll play that one in the future. Yeah. I also got this weird TikTok clip um, that I pulled from No Agenda uh, of them complaining about capitalism. <laughs> oh really? <laughs> We've got to talk about it at some point because oh. it's just. Is oh, it man, the one that's uh, that's? Um, don't right? ask. Don't ask. We'll oh, do it in okay. the future. All right. Nah. All right. All right. So um, so sorry we missed a week, guys. Uh, we're you know we're trying to catch up. Hopefully things will like settle in for both of us. God, I hope um, so. I'm tired of coughing. Liberty Larry's TB will go away, and I'll have my thing will go away too. Although I'm looking at surgery again. So yeah. oh well. Um, and uh, yeah, but at least for now we plan we'll figure out something yeah um for next week also all alabama libertarians sorry y'all <coughs> that neither yeah, of us made neither it of to us this made convention it. um i did want to go um yeah, it, it just for, for me it just snuck up on me like i just it, i realized <laughs> it was like a week away and had no way to plan to get there yeah honestly i thought it was this coming weekend not last weekend too but um but I I couldn't have done it this I like I just couldn't have done it this past weekend. Yeah, yeah, just no way. Wow. Um, so I, hate it. Anyway, I hear we missed sorry, out on a good time. Yeah, like I heard it sorry, was a good missed, convention. Missed all you guys. I always so, have fun at those things, and uh, yeah. and, and some of those people I, I literally only see once a year. I like seeing them. So. Yeah. yeah. So sorry I missed you guys. Uh, Definitely we'll catch you next other. year. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'll be at national. Oh, you'll be at National. Yeah, yeah, I'm not going to National. So. That's May, I guess. I have my tickets for National. I need to get flights. That's yeah. the other thing I need. I, I need to get on that, too, because it is February now. Yeah, it'll, get, it'll sneak up on you. Yeah, I, yeah, <laughs> I know. Uh, so, so uh, But anyway, we don't know when exactly, but we'll definitely figure out next week, uh, depending on what kind of things pop up in the schedule, because I think I'm going to have surgery between now and then. But, yeah. um, but we'll figure it out. And uh, do a post surgery podcast or a pre surgery podcast, one of the two. We'll figure yeah, maybe. it out. Maybe, yeah, maybe. So, um, but in the meantime, you can follow us on Facebook. You can subscribe on iTunes, YouTube, Podbean, uh, like and share, um, comment, criticize. You can always email me, Michael at the Liberty Mike dot com. Um, what, what are the other things that I usually say? I don't remember. I feel oh, like and that. I, yeah. again, like. <laughs> I really think that the um, that interview with uh, Dr. Miller is an important topic, and I really want to urge you guys to spread that around as much as you can. Yeah, um, absolutely. Because it just doesn't get talked about enough, and there was some really interesting insight about what to look for and what we can from, all from do. somebody who's dealt with it. Yeah, that that's got firsthand experience, like like in the real world with it. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, do that. Yep. Appreciate it. And uh, we'll be back next week when we finally get this right. And in the meantime, try to stay free. Life short, live free. Ciao. Later. Mm-hmm.